All right, I'm going to um, talk you through the length tension curve or the force length curve and the force velocity curve for muscle mechanics. So the first thing is to look at the length tension curve. And this is a graph of the length tension curve or force on the y-axis and sarcomere length, so the smallest unit of the muscle, on the x-axis. And you see it's an interesting relationship. It's not linear, it's actually an inverted U. So as length increases, so does force up to a peak, and it's the optimal length of a sarcomere, around 2, two to 2.25 um, microns. And then as the length continues to increase, the force production of the sarcomere decreases. Now it's important to remember that force or tension in a sarcomere is related to the number of cross bridges that are formed. And sometimes I go back between the word force and the word tension. Um, in, in this respect, they are, you can assume that they are synonyms. All right, so let's look at a different view of this. Um, this is my version of the tension or force and sarcomere length. And this tells you the why that the force is decreased or increased. So at optimal, you see that the actin and myosin have all their openings to form cross bridges. And remember, the number of cross bridges is directly proportional to force production. If you go to a, a shorter or a squished sarcomere, um, you can see that some of the cross bridge sites are not available because the actin overlap. And so you have a decreased number of cross bridges and thus decreased force production. Then you go to a lengthened view of it and the sarcomere is too long and it's stretched out so the actin and myosin cannot form optimal number of cross bridges. So the number of cross bridges decreases and thus the force production decreases. So too squished, too stretched, just right. And here is a version of this force length in a joint. So this is um, full flexion of the biceps brachii and el um, full elbow flexion rather and then full elbow extension. And you can see um, since we're dealing with a joint we have to deal with torque right because we cannot mus measure muscle force you have to measure joint torque. But as the elbow angle changes and the muscle length changes from short to, you know, when it's flexed to lengthen muscle when it's in full extension, the torque increases to mid-range around 90 to 100 degrees of elbow flexion, and then the torque decreases. So very similar to what we saw before. And so if we take that into some sort of practical application, this is how you can change up um, which muscles you're focusing on in, in the fitness facility or when you're working out. And this is due to something called active insufficiency. And active insufficiency is when a muscle is contracting at extreme ranges of mo motion. So when it's too short or when it's too long. And remember, when a muscle is too short, all its sarcomeres are too short. They cannot form enough cross bridges and cannot generate force. When a muscle is too long, the sarcomeres are stretched out. Cross bridges cannot be formed and force production decreases. Typically, we think of this in a shortened position, and so I'll show you um, an example of when you go into knee flexion and plantar flex the ankle, you have shortened the gastrocnemius, which we'll go over next week, and then the exercise would focus on the soleus. And here's an example of that. Hopefully, it, we can move it into this frame of reference. All right, so here is, um, I can't see it too well. Okay, I'm going to cut this short right now.